In the last segment, we talked about combination reactions, and we tried three, but of course you're going to want to go to your book and try more. In this segment, we're going to pick up with decomposition. Decomposition means you start with one thing and you break it apart into several things. Now, these are not as easy to predict, so for the most part, you won't really have to predict. You can recognize these because you're starting with one thing and you're breaking up into multiple things. This one is a challenge to balance. So let's start with that one. One lead in, one lead out. Two nitrogens in, one nitrogen out. So we're going to put a two there. Six oxygens in, one oxygen from the lead compound, two oxygens from the nitrogen compound, which means how many more oxygens have to be accounted for here. Six in, six out which means you need three to be accounted for with the oxygen. Odd numbers always bother people, but the reality of it is, is this means we have three halves, because three halves times two equals three. To get rid of the two in the denominator, multiply the whole thing by two, and that gives us two PBNO32 yields two PBO, plus 4NO, plus 3O2, and there is your final balanced decomposition equation. Some of the stoichiometric coefficients so that there are no fractions would be 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3 is 4 plus 7, 11. This one, again, decomposition, you start with one thing, you end with more. Always when you see a three and a two is your clue that you should strive for six. Two here, three there, fixes the oxygens, which would mean you would put a two on the potassium chloride. Sum of the stoichiometric coefficients, two plus two plus three equals seven. On this one, this is a chemical hydrate, which means these five waters are attached, just like my pen is attached to my hand, and I can let it go. So the five waters would mean I have five pens, which means when I decompose it, how many waters am I going to release? I'm going to release five. Sum is equal to one plus one plus five, seven. Single replacement. Single replacement has the form of some sort of compound here, usually ionic, and something that is by itself or in elemental form, where C comes in and bumps off A, so to speak. So you have to make valid products and you need to determine if it's actually going to occur. So this should not be new, but as a reminder, this you could think of this as the guy and the girl going to the dance and the new guy coming along. I mean, no offense if this brings back any sad memories. But when is the girl going to give up her date? Well, not always, right? There are conditions. So you can use your imagination, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But we're going to assume that all of these are going to go forward. Okay, so the lithium will combine with the chlorine and displace the lead. Lithium then has to pair with the chlorine in a valid way, which is why we get LiCl, because lithium forms a plus, chloride forms a minus. Then you need to balance it. The only thing that's out of balance is the chlorine. Two here, two there which means the sum then is 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is equal to 6. Okay? I'm going to jump down to this one because I'm going to do sum for this segment and then I'm going to have you fill in for the rest. Calcium will form with chlorine and iron will be displaced. 
So iron is displaced is easy, but calcium, you have to go through the ions. Calcium will form a plus two, chlorine will form a minus one, which means you need three of them to make CaCl3 as your valid product. CaCl3 is the valid product. Calcium's balance, iron balanced, chlorine balance, and this is all ready to go, so our sum is equal to four. On this one, because gold has multiple ion forms, I predicted this one for you. Okay, so this one, the, li the lithium will be displaced, and then we need to balance. One gold, one gold, three lithiums, three lithiums. By the way, we are assuming, assuming that this will go forward because we haven't looked at the activity series yet. Okay? Zinc will displace the hydrogen. The valid form of hydrogen is H2. Okay? And as long as I'm going along here, Magnesium will pair with the sulfate, which means MgSO4 is our product. H2 is the valid product there. Okay, so I will leave it up, well, here. One, two, three, four. That adds up to four. Sum is one, three, one, three. One plus three plus one plus three, which is eight. One, one, two, one, one equals five. Okay, again, you should pause the video and try more before moving on. Double replacement, you should have had a lot of practice with this before. This should not be new, okay? Double replacement doesn't have a single one coming in. This is more like the square dance where both products dissociate, which means these have to be aqueous. That's the only way they dissociate is if they're aqueous and dissolve in water. So the first thing you have to do is identify it as double replacement, and the second thing you need to do is predict valid products. Na plus, OH minus, Li plus, NO3 minus, these two pair, these two pair, and that's how you get these two products. Think in groups, one sodium, one sodium, one hydroxide, one hydroxide, one lithium, one lithium, one nitrate, one nitrate and your sum is going to be equal to 4. On the next page, we'll try a couple, and then I'll let you try these on your own. K plus, OH minus, H plus, PO4 three minus, and there are three of them. K plus with the phosphate, H plus with the OH minus, we're going to ignore that there are three of them. We get K3PO4 and H2O. One potassium in, three potassiums out, so we need a three here. One phosphate in, one phosphate out. Three hydroxides, three hydrogens gives us three waters. And the sum is three plus one plus one plus three, which is eight. I'm going to pause this and I'm gonna complete the rest. You pause, you complete them, and then check your answers and we'll be ready for the next segment.